Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rubber Running here again, and today I'm here for the breakdown of my favorite character in the game, Enmu. He is such an interesting setup, mix up, reset character, and he's got a blend of everything. He's got offense, he's got actual close attacks like some demons don't, but he's also got aerial projectiles like some demons do. So he's got a blend of zoning, resets, mix-ups, even offense. He's got, an, he's got an invincible attack, he's got an amazing armor attack, he's got literally everything. He's very powerful, but not just in a stupid, dumb, powerful way. He's very unique and he can be really interesting and complex and powerful, which is why I love him so much. So I think we should just get straight into it because there's a lot to talk about with Enmo. So his regular attack string is six hits, you just does a few hits with the tentacles and then he throws projectiles afterwards. These projectiles actually do go really far, but there's no reason you'd ever be throwing out the full attack screen from this distance unless you just want to be, I don't know, really weird and catch your opponent off guard <laughs> if they tr maybe try and dash in and you throw these projectiles, I guess. His down combo, I don't do very often unless I'm literally out of everything, I just want a hard knockdown to build some meter back. And his up combo, I also don't really use much at all except for some few strange unique combos like where you can cancel his up combo into two of the uh into his special one and that can lead just lead to some little slightly strange situations like if the opponent was blocking that and they block that then they're advantageous and you can go for stuff like this goodness me i'm already getting into his cool pressure stuff but this is the only real use i have for his up combo is going for this kind of unique setup which I think is pretty cool. His aerial attack string is really, really powerful. It's three th projectiles in the air that travel nearly full screen. They do die out a little bit beforehand, but they go a decent distance, and they lead to a hard knockdown, unlike poor characters like Yahaba, who don't get hard knockdowns from his aerial attack string if the opponent is airborne or anything other than just standing, and Muzu is always going to be a hard knockdown. So even if you're ending your combo in it, you can get a hard knockdown and build a bunch of meter at the end. It's so awesome, and it's so likely to hit because they're projectiles, and they start a yellow combo. They're just, they're just, they're just amazing. They're projectiles, they're hard knockdowns, they can be combo extensions. They're just amazing. His aerial tilt attack is equally really good. It's not, you know, the most ridiculous amazing one in the game, and it does start a red combo, but it does have an awesome hitbox. It dives pretty far forwards, and with these extra tentacles that come out in front of you, it's very, very hard to whiff punish, because, you know, there's just these extra hitboxes out in front of him, and it recovers decently fast. And thanks to those tentacles, it has an amazing hitbox, because even if he doesn't get hit by the initial part, it's very likely that they'll get hit by those, so you don't just awkwardly sit in front of them like some characters do, like when they do a dive kick with the sword and they're just sitting there in front of the opponent when they miss. And moves, he hits them with the tentacles and you can get a combo and it's, it's just very, very good. And you can combo with it off of his first two projectiles and then get a combo going that way if you want to get go in for a hit confirm into some kind of really simple but high damaging combo. His tilt special on the ground is also really amazing. It has a huge hitbox, as you can see by these huge tentacles. It is a little bit deceiving, it's hard to tell how far it'll go. Sometimes it seems like it'll go, looks like it hits the opponent, but then it doesn't. And its damage also changes depending how close you are, because the different amounts of tentacles will hit, because as you can see it's full distance, it only hits one, it does 500, whereas up close it'll do 800 and hit three hits. Um, it is impossible to combo off of from a distance unless you dash cancel it so if you do see it hits and you really want the damage you can dash cancel it to get a combo um you could have made that a little bit shorter for a hard knockdown but um up close you can combo with it super easily um and then going for some crazy shenanigans that we'll talk about later his... It's also really cool that it has such a huge hitbox, because you can actually dash cancel it. Oops. You can dash cancel it right when it seems like it's going to come out. And it looks like it's going to hit, but then you get covered by all of these, and you get to go for a grab. Or even those tentacles can come out. Oops. It looks like all those tentacles are going to hit, so they're standing there blocking, but you're actually doing a grab, and you're completely covered by the 
animation of these tentacles. Like, there was no way that anyone saw that that grab was coming. It's really, really ridiculous how how useful that is. And speaking of ridiculous, probably the most controversially amazing part of Enmu's toolkit is his grab, which reaches at nearly round start distance, just a tiny step forwards and it hits the opponent. It does decent damage. It's an average damage grab, which is high considering how amazing it is. It reaches ridiculously far. It's not particularly slow. It is just Ridic like, what, what is this? And because it's not like he's dashing forward like Hinokami Tanjiro or Nezuko or something that because you know if they whiff it then they're in their face and they can get punished by their opponent. And Moose, he's still standing all the way back here and he just catches his opponent from so far away with this thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. And when you combine it into in, blah, 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 in with the fact that he has amazing pressure tools and stuff, having this ridiculous grab is ridiculous because he's got these slow projectiles, he's got these aerial projectiles, he's got so much that can just add into this grab, like even if you just do like a some attack string, you can combo into it, it's so quick. It's, it is the most ridiculous grab in the game and it is so amazing. And because it does the decent damage, it's gonna be your combo ender in a lot of situations. Like if you do something simple like this, um, wait, no. If you're trying to do like a super simple combo and just end in a grab, no matter how little your combo meter is, you can end in a grab and it'll do some decent damage, and that leads to some pretty awesome B&B &B combos with him. Oops, I was even too fast there, but that would have done about 4,000 damage. It's pretty ridiculous. An amazing grab. His movement is also pretty awesome. He has a pretty unique um, aerial sidestep, where instead of putting him straight to the ground, like someone like Zenitsu's or even Gyu's would, he kind of gets put in this like cool sidestep state. Like as you can see, his forwards one is a bit more normal, but even that he gets, you know, he stays in the air for a long time. It's kind of resembles Shinobu's, which is really amazing because he's got awesome buttons literally everywhere, particularly in the air, thanks to his awesome aerial attack string. So he can stay really high in the air and throw his projectiles after a sidestep. So jump, jump, dodge into into attacks is always really powerful. But the fact that he can throw projectiles from it that are a hard knockdown from it that keeps him really high in the air when he does it. It's really, really amazing. And he has other options that he can go for with it as well. He can do his dive kick or his special dive kick. It's it's ridiculous. On the ground, his his movement's, you know, pretty average. His dash is pretty average, nothing to talk about, but yeah, decent side steps in the air. Now for his special moves, and boys, there is a lot to talk about with his special moves. So his special one is probably one of the le most underwhelming, but also one of the most interesting and useful compared to other characters' special moves. It's not his most useful, but it is certainly useful and technical and can be used in special ways. So as you can see there, if you throw one of the projectiles, it actually recovers really quickly and you can dash in for free afterwards if you just wait for a little bit. I can dash in for free and I actually arrive before the projectile arrives, which leads to some really, really tricky scenarios. Because you're following in behind the projectile, the opponent can't just mash buttons on you or do a water wheel, because they'll get hit by the projectile. And then at the very end, you're actually in front of the projectile, so you can actually go for a grab, or you can even go for a grab from behind the projectile, and they have to block the projectile, or else, you know, they get hit by it, and then they're gonna get hit by your dash in. But if they block, then they get stuck into your grab. Or you can just dash in and go for like regular attacks and they're forced to stand there because they're blocking the, the thing and then it's just terrifying. Like what are you supposed to do against it? It's ridiculous. And he does have the option of throwing all three. Um, but having the third, second and third one have a lot more um, recovery that you can't really dash in in front of them. So if you do want to dash them, you're going to have to dash cancel them, which will cost you meter. But having all of these ridiculous things on the screen leads to even more ridiculous resets and shenanigans. Because come on, all of these projectiles on the screen, which I haven't even mentioned, have amazing tracking. Like throwing in a grab in between three projectiles. Like come on, it's so ridiculous. Or you can just dash in, do regular attacks, or do this unblockable or whatever. It's so, so stupidly amazing. Like I can even dash in, do some normal attacks, and go for this unblockable. Like... It's too much awesome stuff. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get Sabito to walk around sideways, but these do have awesome tracking. Even if the opponent goes into the sky or walks around sideways, they will chase them to the ends of the earth until they disappear. They do sometimes go into the air so they can 
They don't really work well against a jumping opponent, but anyone going sideways or sidestepping, they will track them so much, which makes it so terrifying considering they're such good pressure tools, and he has a such good grab with them. So, yeah, they're really awesome. They're really ridiculous. He can even combo off of the first one, like if you want to, um, depending on the distance, if you do something like this, I think he can combo off of it. You're never really going to want to do this in practical combos, but it's just cool that he can do this. Like, it recovers so quickly that he can get a combo from it. Like, what? And that also means it recovers so quickly that it's advantageous on block, which is really handy when we start talking about his other special moves that are unsafe on block like this. This is very unsafe. You can't cancel it into anything. You can't cancel it into sidesteps or jumps. But you can cancel it into his projectile, which is advantageous on block. So if I do my projectile even in the face, I can attack before the opponent can, and I can even choose to do all three if I want to for some reason. And I can, uh, yeah, there's just, it's so ridiculous. So you can keep yourself safe off of situations like this where you would normally be unsafe. And la-di-da, do your crazy pressure that we'll talk about later on. And as I mentioned at the beginning as well, it can be used for some kind of interesting resets. Because the, if the opponent blocks this hit here, Oh, he didn't block it, but then he blocks the last hit, then you're very advantageous, and you just got some really interesting things. They don't combo into each other, but they're just amazing slow projectiles, and slow projectiles are juicy. And it's the exact same in the air. Just an amazing projectile. I prefer to do it on the ground, though, because it actually recovers faster. And in the air, you already have these projectiles, so why would you go for spending meter on ones? Okay, now for his tilt special. <sighs> now... As if one really unique and interesting special move wasn't enough, kind of like Rokodaki with his traps, Enmu has a bunch, so his tilt special is another really, really interesting special move. It does a lot. So, first of all, you can cancel it and just attack off of it, and it's a combo extender. You can just do a few attacks into it and a few attacks out of it, and it'll just link, it'll be handy dandy easy combo extensions and as you can see it leaves this suspicious purple orb on the screen and after a few seconds that orb explodes and um yeah what is that it's it's a setup tool it's an awesome setup tool that you can combo off of into the setup which is amazing and it leads to some really fabulously awesome combos like stuff like this Like, you get both of those explosions in the one combo, you get, like, oh, these combos are just so ridiculously amazing. And they lead to some really, really awesome setup tools and stuff as well, like if the opponent is guarding after you've done some stuff, maybe I've gotten a red combo. I can go choose to go for some stuff like this, and as you can see, because that orb's there, I get to get some really cool combos off of things that I usually wouldn't get cool combos off of. And they lead to some cool setups, because if the opponent is, you know, standing there, they have to block, I can go for my grab, and if the thing explodes while they're trying to block, you know. Uh, whoops. Yeah, basically... If the opponent's blocking and standing there while this, they have to block it and they have to block the explosion. And then they get hit by my grab. It's really ridiculous and it has a really good hitbox and it pops the opponent up into the air. And it stays there on block and hit, I believe. So if you do this and the opponent hits you, there's a chance that if they don't move far enough, they'll get hit by the projectile. And then if they get hit by the projectile, you can dash up for free and get a full combo going this way. And oops, if they get hit by the explosion, you go for a grab, and that's a really big damage combo. And it's just, it's such an awesome special move. It does so much. It's ridiculously amazing. Literally, the only bad thing about it is that if you do it on its own, it is very punishable. Like, I can't cancel it into a block, um, into a jump or anything. So if I do it on block, I don't get to extend or do it any anything. But I can cancel it into other special moves. So I can do something like this. Cancel it into my projectiles. And as I said... Regular projectile is advantageous on hit, so you can just do your projectile and then do more stuff. And I could have gone in for a grab there, and the opponent would have had to get hit by the grab. And you also have the option, if your opponent, you know, does like punishing it, and they block it, they're like, oh, I'm gonna go in for a punish. Or if they don't realize they can punish it, or whatever, literally anything, like... You just want to make sure you cancel into something, so you have the option of cancelling into your projectile. But you also have the option of cancelling it into... Oh, not that one. That one's a bit slow. You have the option of cancelling into... This! 
So straight after the opponent blocks that, you cancel straight into your unblockable, and then boom, you thought you could block against me? No, sir. And then boom, they're getting hit by stuff, and wham bam, thank you ma'am. Your opponent's dying, and you're doing some cool combos and resets and stuff. It's really amazing, and we haven't even talked about the aerial version. The aerial version, unlike some special moves, is actually better than the grounded version, because it does more damage, and it has a dive kick at the start. Which just leads to some awesome things, because off of your full aerial attack string, you can do this, and you can actually get full stuff off of it. And off of combos, it's really useful, because if you do stuff like this, you can do interesting set- oh, kind of messed that up, didn't I? Oops. Um. Yeah. But being able to go, okay, how am I messing this up so bad? <laughs> combos and stuff like this and it's particularly useful if you're um doing this thing where like your opponent does that and you do you break their guard with that basically goodness me then you can do some cool things with it basically it's just really handy that it has that extra dive kick because you can get it off super consistently so yeah, combos like this that are really flashy, really awesome, and really off-potent mix-ups. It's crazy. So his tilt special is amazing. Now his guard special is also amazing. It's not as technical, but it is ridiculously awesome. It's kind of like Rui's guard attack, but the fact that Enmu has all of these awesome technical tools and awesome resets, it's awesome stuff, as well as an invincible reversal. So unlike poor characters like Yahaba or... um. Uh, I don't know, there's a few bunch of characters that don't have invincible specials, like uh, Shinobu and stuff. I can't think of them all right now. But he's got he's got one, and Reach has decent range, and he can combo with it for free. So he just does, you know, reversal into this. He can get a hard knockdown and build a ton of meter off of it. and Or he can get a combo off of it if he wants. Going for a reset. Might go for these resets that we were doing before. It's, 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 it's ridiculous, and it can lead to some really awesome damage. Some people like to do combos where you do stuff like this. And then do a dash up afterwards. Because it can lead to some really juicy damage. And, um, it can be really good, but... Yeah, it just is an awesome combo option. It's an awesome reversal. It leads to free combos afterwards. It is... It has an awesome hitbox, like what? why does this technical character, who also has a really awesome armor attack, have an amazing invincible reversal? It is just beyond me why he is so amazing and has everything. Now let's talk about his demon skills. Demon skill 1 and demon skill 2 are quite similar, they're just slightly different in range and speed. So demon skill 1 is your fast, short ranged one that you'll do up close on the opponent if you're doing close range attacks. As I said, it's really good of cancelling things that the opponent would expect, so if you're doing something like this, you can cancel into it there, and I bet your opponent is not not expecting you to throw it out there, so you can catch people off guard practically with 100% guarantee. The only bad thing about these is that they start a red combo, so you're not going to get too much damage off of them, but you can get cool resets off of them, and just being able to open up your opponent so easily is really amazing. His slower version has a huge hitbox, and it is pretty cool at baiting out an opponent's breakaway. So if the opponent breaks a combo and you summon this, they basically just as soon as they recover from their breakaway, they get hit by it and you get to start a new combo. And it can also be really useful for just doing from a distance and stuff like this if you want to go for that. However, in most of the distances that I would go for this, I would go for my grab because my grab is ridiculous and does more damage and has a hard knockdown and is free and doesn't cost me, you know, a support gauge, which is my breakaway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 
the close range one is far more useful in my opinion because it's really fast and it catches the opponent off guard and it just makes people so scared against blocking you and especially when you're a reset setup character having someone be scared against you is really really useful and powerful okay and his ultimate activation is really amazing as well because it's actually a projectile and it goes full screen practically i think or maybe it does go full screen it's not too fast but it's pretty decently speed it's about the same as rui's and having a full screen ultimate is obviously ridiculous because you'll never miss it and unless the opponent dodges it but you'll never awkwardly be at the wrong range and it makes it super easy to combo into off of literally anything even off of like um, stuff like this you can combo off of depending on the distance and yeah off of any combos no matter how far the opponent is like away from you if you're doing stuff like um, like where they've been airborne it just makes it super easy to combo into his ultimate because it'll just combo with literally literally anything so yeah awesome ultimate his boost mode when he goes into boost mode he gets an extra little combo ender but I never really find myself using it because it does like no damage, it's not a particularly long hard knockdown, so you may as well just use the extra meter you got from going into boost mode to go for more awesome combos and resets. And in surge mode, fortunately Enmu doesn't have a particularly easy time in surge mode, he can't just spam special moves into special moves. But um, he can just go more crazy than usual because he doesn't have to worry about how much meter he uses. So in unless it, oh, instead of doing super easy combos where he's just doing water wheel, waterfall, water wheel, waterfall, water wheel, waterfall, he's going to have really crazy pressure and just be able to go completely ridiculous. I'm sure there are some cool surge combos, but I really don't go into surge too much with Enmu. Okay, now I think we can finally talk about Enmu's combos and resets. We'll just start combos, but combos basically go into resets because a lot of the time you're going to be blending the two together. So, with Enmu, what re-combos and resets should we talk about first? Um, a really simple bread and butter combo is just doing a few attacks into your tilt special, into a full attack string, into a grab. It's very easy, very consistent, even to do in a laggy online environment. It's pretty good damage. Over 3,000 for one bar is pretty above average damage in this game. Um, you can do a little bit more, like if you do something like this, you do actually get to do a full dash in. So if you want to get a hard knockdown, you can take a hard knockdown, which honestly I suggest doing more of the time, because then you get to build back a ton of meter. So not only did you do a 3000 damage combo, it only cost you one bar, and you got a hard knockdown to build back a bunch more meter to do more damaging combos in the future. It's pretty pretty awesome stuff. If you want to do some more damaging combos, you have to cancel into his tilt special a bit earlier, because um, that just gives him more time in this combo and you can do some more cool things. So a combo I like to do is something like this. And going for a grab. I just find that's a very easy combo to do and it's very flashy, it's very satisfying to hit and it's really decent damage for two bars. Obviously he has also options where you can go for something like this. Oops, bit slow. Actually, doing a full attack string actually scales your combo, so a lot of the time you have want to cancel off of your second last attack string hit. So you can either go for a grab there, or you can probably even dash in and get a little bit more. Um, um, if I did that dash a little bit slower, it wouldn't have cost me any meter, but as you can see, 3,700 damage for two bars spent. Pretty awesome stuff, and it's very flexible. <clears throat> now, if you want to get into more reset territory, that's where he becomes pretty interesting. Because combo-wise, that's about all you're going to get. If you cancel early, you can do stuff like this, and then you can do your aerial attack string, you get the two explosions, you can go for an ultimate or a grab at the end. That's about as far as combos go. If you get an aerial tilt attack, you're just going to be doing a few attacks and going for a reset, and same goes for if you are getting a red combo from your armor attack. Because you don't have enough time to go for you know regular combos, you're gonna be going for resets for more potential damage. Now, off of these resets, 
let me check that Sabuto is going to be guarding. Yep, so you do a few hits into your tilt special. And then I like to go in for a charged armored special move because that works practically 100% of the time. I've very rarely see anyone block that, especially the first five times you hit them with it. Maybe after five times they'll start to realize, but it is very consistent and very, very awesome. Because it, it's, it's more damage than going for a grab because you get a full guard break combo. So once again, off of a red combo, you just do a few attacks into a tilt special, into a... Ch oops. You have to have a little bit of delay there, make sure you don't accidentally do an attack like I did. Go for a full charged armored attack, jump into the air, full attack string, tilt special, and if you delay a little bit here, that's best. Um, oops, even if you mess it up, you can go for a grab there because you're advantageous on block. can be a little bit tricky to get that follow up at the end, because if the opponent is too high, they'll be too high for the explosion. That should work, and you go in for a grab or an ultimate. That's a big, juicy chunk of damage. Like, damn, for a reset, that's like 60% of the opponent's life, and it really didn't cost me that much. No demon skills, only a few bars of meter. It's really ridiculous how powerful his resets can be. Um, obviously, another option off of this kind of situation is just going for a grab. That's, like, almost guaranteed. If you end your combo in... Your tilt special move, you can cancel into grab so quickly that I'm not even sure if you can avoid that by jumping. It's ridiculous. Which means you can get some high potential damage even at the end of a longer combo. So even if you've done a combo like this, you can kind of go for resets and stuff like that because it will restand the opponent. Um, let me show that a little bit better. So the opponent's restood. You have time to go for these kind of things whenever you want. So a lot of the time I do like ending my combos like this. And afterwards, so as we said, you can either go for a charged armor attack where you can get this cool combo we just showed before, which has 4,000 damage. You can go for a grab, which I'm, is possibly unavoidable. And getting a 1,500 damage at the end of your combo is pretty ridiculous if it's guaranteed. Because if you do like, you know, a 3,000 damage combo, suddenly that's a 4,500 and a bit damage combo. And that's like, whoa, that's a lot of damage for really simple combos. You also have the option of just having the opponent block. So just do some delayed attacks and the opponent is standing there blocking. Then they have to block the explosion. Then they get hit by your grab. You'll have the option of jumping away and doing this. And, oops. Um, uh, I don't remember, there was a really cool setup with this. Maybe, yeah, it's if the opponent ends up getting hit by it, like if they're trying to mash on you, um, and you jump away, you can either get a throw, or if they get hit by it, then you get to go charge in for free and get a cool combo. Yeah, that's it. So if the opponent does get, end up getting hit by these because they're trying to mash on you because they're expecting you to do like this or they, they try to like jump out of the way or do something, there's a good chance that if you just jump back and do some projectiles, they'll get hit by it and then you can dash in for free. And oops, don't mess up the combo. Oops. You can get the dash in for free. You just have to time it a bit better than I do. And you can go in for some awesome resets yet again. So he just has so many options for awesome resets and stuff. And I think another option I found was doing something like this. Because then there's two explosions happening when the opponent gets reset. So this, this is like taking it a little bit overkill. But if your opponent starts to get used to the resets that we mentioned before, which I'll just quickly recap. You either end your combo and go for your charged charged armor attack, a grab, or some delayed attacks to make them stand there blocking, and then go for a grab later when the explosion hits. And also, if the opponent's standing there blocking and you do these, you can also cancel into this anytime, just remember that. But um, if you want to get really overkill with the setups, you can do stuff like this. Like, if your opponent starts, if you're against a pretty, like, tough opponent and they are pretty skilled at the game and they start to catch on with your resets and stuff, 
doing this is pretty awesome because there's an explosion that happens as soon as the opponent recovers and then there's a second explosion. So there's two explosions to cover literally any of your gaps. So it covers the startup and the recovery of whatever. So you can do the same resets like as you saw there, I went for the charged armor attack, but there was an extra explosion beforehand. It just makes it so much harder to avoid because they have less time to jump out of the way when there's an explosion that they have to block first before they can jump out of the way of the armor attack. And it is just so ridiculous, and the opponent's gonna be so terrified when you're doing stuff like this. Because, like, there's an explosion, you can maybe grab after that explosion or do some regular attacks, and then the second explosion goes off, and then you can go for a grab. There is just so much potential for so much ridiculous pressure with Enmu. And really, when you start, like, feeling and you start practicing all of these resets that I've shown you, they kind of start just, like, coming to you in the middle of the match. And you can just do, like, whatever you like, and. You start to really get a feel for like placing down the bombs and then going for these um, armor attack or a grab or making things unblockable or just making the opponent stand there and block things and then they get hit by their explosions and stuff. And you, it just becomes so fluid and delicious, awesome pressure. It is, it's really amazing. Um, but I think that's about all there is to talk about. So yeah, off of any red combo, like these are red combos as well gonna be doing these sorts of resets and then off of the resets you can get really big juicy damage and off of the resets you can also throw in an ultimate like in this situation here I can throw an ultimate and then do a big juicy chunk of damage or just go for the grab and yeah Enmu is a character that will absolutely steamroll the opponent if you know how to use these resets correctly whether you're going for your charged armor attack or either you're throwing in grabs like or unblockables there's just no way to... There's no way to stay strong against an Enmu. An Enmu will open you up if they know what they're doing. So make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you practice all of these resets. And I think, honestly, that's all I really have to talk about with Enmu. Awesome combos. Awesome pressure. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching this breakdown. I hope you pick up Enmu and I hope you have a blast playing him because he is an awesome character. I hope you learned something from this breakdown, and uh, yeah, go out and play some Enmu, he's really fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.